In today's class, we will learn quickly how to find whether a given number is a palindrome number or not. So first we have to know what we mean by a palindrome number. If suppose we are given a number and if we look from the other side, from the reverse side, and if the number still looks same, means if the digits that we have in that number, if they are still in that sequence, then that, that number will be considered as a palindrome or palindrome number. If we take as example, say 3883. Now, if we look from this side also, then again, the sequence of the digits will be 3883 only. So, from both the sides, the number is same. So, this is a palindrome number. Now, if we take this number 5671. So this is not a palindrome number because from this side, if we look, then it is 5671. And from the reverse side, from the other side, if we look at the number, then it will be 1765. But if we take this number, 565, so from this side also it is 565. And from this side also, this is 565. So this is a palindrome number of three digits. So this is the theoretical knowledge or this is the concept of identifying a given number whether that is a palindrome or not. But if we want to do that thing through our program, then we have to develop a logic that will be executed through our program. And before writing the program, if we want to represent by a flowchart or by an algorithm, then what will be the approach that we will learn in today's class? So first we will learn the logic so if we take the same example 565 five, so what we do first we will divide that number by 10 so 10 means what will be the quotient here it will be 5 so it will be 50 then we will have 65 normal division so here it will be 6 then we will have 60 then 5 so from this number our quotient is how much? Our quotient is 56, which is a non-zero value. And how much is the remainder? Remainder is 5. So in the program, what we will do? First, we will take that number. We will input that number and we will save that into our variable. Now, if suppose that variable in, is n in our program, then n will have which value? So that given number is 565. Five. And then what we will do? We will take another variable, say, let's say q and we will move that value or we'll save that value in that q in that variable so q will have at the first instant it will have the same value 565 five. now what we will do we will as i said we will divide that number by 10 and whatever will be the quotient so here the quotient is 56 that will be again saved in this variable q so q will have 56 and the remainder part, remainder part will be saved in another variable which is supposed to be R in this program say. So R will have that remainder value. So this time it will have 5. Now in the next step what we will do, we will again divide Q by 10. And the quotient will be again saved in that variable Q, the same variable. So this time the quotient will be how much? 56 by 10. So quotient will be 5. This time Q will have 5. And remainder is how much? Remainder is 6. And then what we will do? Again, we will repeat the process. So this time Q has 5. So we will divide by 10. But this time the quotient value will be 0. So again, that value will be moved to the same variable Q. So this time Q will have zero and the remainder value will be five. Now what we will do, we will take another variable, a new variable or temporary variable, which we can name as temp. And after every division that we have done here, a new value will be saved to temp. And what value that temp variable will have? For that, we will be executing this expression. So, say in the first step, when Q has this value 565 and we are dividing by this 10, so the quotient will be 56 and that will be saved back to that variable, same variable Q. So, this time after division, Q has 56 and R has 5, the remainder value. And when we will be executing this expression for the first time, before that, we have to initialize this term by 0. So, for the first time when we will be executing, it will be 0 multiplied by 10, 
that is 0 only and the remainder value 5. So after this step temp will have 5. Then when we will be performing this division this time q has 56. So after dividing by 10 now quotient will be 5 which will again we will save to q. So this time q now we will have 5 and remainder value will be 6. And when we will be executing this expression again then the value the new value of temp will be this time before that the temp had value 5 and now we are multiplying by again 10 and then we are adding the remainder value so this time it will be 50 plus remainder value is 6 so it will be 56 now again we are dividing q by 10 so this time since q has only 5 which is less than 10 so this time q or the quotient will be 0 which will be again saved to q only so q will have 0 and the remainder value is 5 and again we will be executing this expression so this time temp will have what the value that it has and then multiplied by 10 and then it will be added with r so temp now has 56 so 56 multiplied by 10 it will be 560 and remainder is 5 so it will be 565 now the value which was initially saved in n and then that was moved to q so the given value which was saved in n that was 565 and after doing this division and this executing this expression the final value of temp that we are getting that is also 565 so at the end if these two values or the values that are stored in these two variables if they are same then we can comment or we can conclude that the given number is a palindrome number otherwise it is not so this is the logic that we will be executing through our program finally and before that we will try to write the algorithm that means in step by step manner so first step will be definitely start we will start our execution then what we will do we will input the number that we have here expressed by n then in the next step what we will do we will initialize the temporary variable just now we have seen that temp variable for the first time when we will be executing the expression expression means temp multiplied by 10 and then plus r the remainder value so for the first time temp should have zero value now what we will do we will save n n means the given number which was saved to n that variable that we will move to q another variable means whatever value n will have the same value q also will have and why we are doing this because the value that we have saved in n we don't want to change that value we want to keep that value intact and next step onwards whatever processing we'll be doing we will be doing on q so the value of q will keep changing but the value of n will remain same now what we do we as we have seen that we are dividing q by 10 and the quotient part we are saving to the same variable q and the remainder part we are saving to r and then we are executing this expression temp is equal to temp multiplied by 10 plus r and for the first time the value of 10 will be 0 and how many times we are repeating this division and execution of this expression that we have at step 6 until the value that we have in q that becomes 0 so if that value has become 0 so there is no point or dividing further that value by 10 so we'll stop there but if it is positive we will continue with our step 5 and step 6 this logic we have seen just now in the previous slide so once that processing is complete means once the q now has become zero what we will do we will stop with our division of step 5 and the execution of the expression that we have at step 6 and we will check the value that we have finally in temp or temp variable if the value that is saved in temp is equal to the value that is saved in n the number that we are checking whether palindrome or not if they match or they are equal then we can conclude that the number is a palindrome number else is not a palindrome number and we will stop our execution so this logic now we will be seeing through our 2d representation means flowchart so first start and then we will input the number that we want to check and then what then we will set that temporary variable to zero 
for the first execution this value will be zero as i said and then what we will do we will move whatever value we have in n variable to the new variable q and then what then we will divide q by 10 the quotient part we will save in q remainder part in r and then this expression and accordingly we will use the relevant block in our flowchart and then what we will do we will check whether the q has become zero or not or q is still positive or not if it is positive then we will repeat the process right so we will show accordingly in our flowchart and if q has become zero if it is not more than zero then we will check whether that value that we have in temp variable that matches with the value that we have n variable or not if it matches then we will conclude that given number is a palindrome number and we will stop our execution but if it doesn't match then we will conclude that given number is not a palindrome number and again we will stop our execution so this is all about the concept of checking a number whether it is a palindrome or not i hope this class was helpful for you with that hope i end today's class thank you